Hey, what's up? The Cabinet Vision Guy here with another video podcast. So my last podcast dealt with customization of Cabinet Vision Solid. It was pretty much just a covering of my presentation that I did in Las Vegas. In this video, I want to cover some of the built-in customization of Cabinet Vision. We've already covered parts, materials, material schedules, and things like that, but what we haven't covered is layer styles. These can be used to change how Cabinet Vision looks, at least in the work area. So let's get started on this. As we can see, I have my layer style set to Sample Architectural. If I click on the drop-down, I have three styles available to choose from. Standard, Shop, and of course, Sample Architectural. Each of these three styles can have drastic changes on how things like dimension lines, door swings, and cabinet outlines appear to us, as well as how they are sent to our drawings page. To edit these, as well as create new ones and delete old ones, I just need to click on the Layers button here to bring up the Layer Schedule dialog. This list contains all of the available schedules to choose from. As I add or remove items from this list, that combo box that we can choose from will be updated to include the new items. If we make any changes that we don't like or mess something up, we can just click the Cancel button to get out of here. Once we're done though, we can click OK to finish this off and update that combo box. Let's add a new schedule to the list so that I don't have to mess with anything that shipped with Cabinet Vision. Now that we have a new schedule there, we can edit it by either double clicking on it or making sure it's highlighted and then clicking on the edit button. This brought up our view layers dialog. This dialog allows us to edit the layers uh, for each area of cabinet vision, from the general layout to assembly views to part views and really everything else. The list on the left here lets us select what set of layers we want to edit. The right should look familiar to you. Well, if you've ever edited the layers by right-clicking in the, in the drawing area and selecting properties and then clicking on the layers tab anyways. This is the list of all the layers that you can affect in Cabinet Vision Solid. Let's deconstruct this box for a moment. Each item has a few elements to it. The first, which is the light bulb, denotes whether or not the layer is active or on. We can see that my walls are on and my ceiling is off. If the layer is on, it will appear to us in the view that we are working with. If it's off, well, then it won't show up. The next is a little pencil. Just like the bulb, it has two states, on and off. Again, our walls pencil is on, while our ceiling pencil is off. This will control whether or not the layer is sent to the drawings. It's totally independent of the on-off state of the layer itself. So we could have a layer that is off that still sends to drawings. This is great for engineering, to get things out of the way to work with, and still making sure that it makes it to the drawings so that they're accurate. Next we have this colored box. An item will have the color that is shown here when it is viewed. If you notice, my walls have a blue box, and my walls in the drawing area are blue. If I click on the square, Cabinet Vision then allows me to select from one of the preset colors available. Now we get to the line type element. This is very similar to the color. When I click on it, I can choose one of a set of predefined line types as well as specifying the line weight. Any objects that are a part of this layer will have their outline drawn using this kind of line. Finally, we have the name layer. While this may seem unimportant, if I scroll down, we can see that some of the names are in bold type. This means that I can double click on them to define extra layer properties. I can also click on the layer name and then click the edit button too. Now, this is an interesting one. When we double clicked on the dimensions layer name, we got this dialog. There's a lot going on here, but I want to cover at least some of this. If you've ever wondered how to customize your auto dimensioning in Cabinet Vision, this is how you do it. I'll start with the style. This is, well, the style of the dimension lines. If I expand this drop down, we can see that I have several predefined styles to choose from. If I don't like any of these styles, I can click on the ellipsis button to edit the existing ones or add and remove styles. I won't go into depth uh, on this right now, but this is one way we can get to this. More on this later. Next we have the horizontal and vertical offset and increments. The offset allows us to specify the number of units of measurement, either inches or millimeters, that the first dimension line will be created away from the side of an object. The increment is the measurement that any additional dimension lines will be created at from the previous line. The reason that we have both is that, as you can see, this wall here has multiple dimension lines on it. 
and how they are offset from the wall is determined by these values. So if I haven't confused you too much, let's look at the lines I have available. This list allows me to add, remove, and edit the automatic dimensioning that Cabinet Vision places as well as the order in which it's created. By default, I have dimension lines for base assemblies, upper assemblies, appliances, and my wall length. Now an important note, the order in which they appear in the list is the order in which they are created in the view. Let's edit the base assemblies line to see how this works. So we can see that we can set the name of the dimension line as well as the type. Our three types are wall, wall end, and island countertop, at least for this view. These are predefined by cabinet vision and are unchangeable. Other views will have different options. Next we have the objects. You can see that some of them are checked and some of them are not. Obviously any items that are checked will appear to us as dimension lines, while any items that are not checked, well, they won't be there. Let's cancel out of this and create a sample dimension line for us to play around with. Okay, so if you watch the preview window here, I will change the type to wall end. And now we can get an idea of what the items are that we're working with. As I check and uncheck items, the preview window shows an example of those changes. Finally, we get to the force dimension line option. This is kind of a weird thing. Not because it's there, but because, well, what does it do? Simply put, it forces a dimension line to be drawn regardless of whether or not it's needed. For example, let's say you had countertop back and countertop front checked. Then let's say you didn't have a top. Cabinet Vision will, by default, not want to draw this line. By selecting Force Dimension Line, you can tell Cabinet Vision to draw it anyways. So that's pretty much it for the dimension lines. I don't know what stack dimensions is for, and I couldn't find it in the help files, and I couldn't get it to do anything. So I'm assuming there's a little bit of logic that needs to be done to make it enable. Uh, I'll find out what that is, and let you guys know as soon as I find out. Now before I close this out, remember, you can create any number of dimension line combos and offset them as you like. Before we close out of this, let's click on the advanced button to see what that's all about. Now, again, each view from floor plan to elevation to 3D and so on will have different advanced options. Basically, these allow us to specify certain advanced features that are specific to this view. The big one that most everyone needs to know about, at least I think so, is the force drawing to black. This means that no matter what color your layers are defined as, when you send the view to drawings, they will change in color to black. Check for overlap lines and check for intersecting surfaces will make cabinet vision attempt to eliminate any lines and surfaces that don't need to be there for your drawing. Be careful when using these two options though, as they can cause cabinet vision to take a very, very long time to send to drawings, based on how many items you have in the drawing, of course. Now, we also have some options that allow us to view the assembly outlines only. Basically, this is the difference between all of our parts showing up in the work area, or just simple squares to represent them. If we have the assembly outlines only checked, then we can specify how we want our door swings to appear as well. Top it off, we can specify show only the well, top outlines as well. Background color is pretty self-explanatory, but I think curve tessellation is not. What is curve tessellation and how does one show this? Well, a curve tessellation is basically a line representation of a curve. When you show a curve's tessellation, you're wanting to use lines between the start and ends of the curve so that it can be more easily recognized that there's a curve there. Some people like to show that, some people don't. And this is just how you can specify that. As I said before, each view is going to have its very own set of advanced options. That's why a lot of these are grayed out. You can play around uh, with them to get the end result that you want from your drawings. Now that we have that done, let's look at those dimension styles we glanced over earlier. Now, while the layer styles determine where to put the dimension lines and which ones to show, this allows us to define how the dimension lines themselves look. We have the ones that ship with Cabinet Vision, so let's just go ahead and take a look at the various items we can edit by clicking on the Edit button. Okay, as usual we have a preview window here on the left, and on the right we have the properties that we can set that deal with how the dimensions look. 
An important one that I think everyone needs to know about is the fixed scale. This allows you to specify the size of the numbers or letters that are in the dimension lines. Well, not exactly the size, but whether they're fixed. Now, why fixed though? Well, if the scale is not fixed, then it will scale with whatever the scale of the drawing is, say one half inch equals one, and so on and so forth. If it's fixed, however, it will be the size that's specified no matter what. As we scroll down, we can see that there are plenty of options for us to choose from allowing to change up the lines and the arrows and how the text is displayed as well as how it fits in the lines. And that's pretty much it. I'm not going to go over all these options because there are a ton of them and it's going to take a lot of time. So we'll get out of here and you can see we can copy whatever style that's already here and edit it to suit our needs. We can also create new ones and as we just did, edit existing ones. The last thing before we finish this up though, if you don't want to look at all of the layer schedules at once like we did earlier, you can edit them individually. Basically all you have to do is right click in the work area and select properties. Then you find the layers tab and there you have it. Each view will have their own layer setup that you can do this with. Whether it's the floor plan, elevation, assembly editor, even reports have a set of layers to mess around with. Uh, you know what? I actually lied. There's one more last thing that I want to talk about. Basically, where are these things stored? Well, all of the settings are stored in a special file called the default.dat. If you ever decide that you want to change any of these settings, but don't want to mess anything up, just back this up. And uh, if you mess anything up or can't figure out what you did originally, just put the backup right back in the folder, and Bob's your uncle, it's back the way it was. So, yeah, this, this podcast was kind of short, but I think it was pretty sweet and hopefully very informative. I think I may do a few more videos like this about the great features of Cabinet Vision that are tucked away, but at the same time right there out in the open so that you can take Cabinet Vision and make it yours exactly the way you want it. Anyways, once again, thanks to Hayfula for their continued support, and finally, here's today's quote.